so I was born the first grandchild on both the maternal and the paternal side of my family. This meant that I got to name the grandparents. And every summer, my mother would drive me from Katy, Texas, a west suburb of Houston, the eight hours up to Stanford, Texas, where she grew up, to my grandma and papu's house, where, to their modest house. Once I got there, <laughs> my, my papu had been an appliance salesman. Stanford had a population of about two or 3,000, and my papu had b sold appliances long enough to get his gold watch. My grandma had been a nurse and worked the night shift up until she retired. My papu at one point had decided to start buying my grandma a Cadillac every two years to my dad's extreme disapproval. It was way too indulgent. For those of you unfamiliar with a Cadillac, a Cadillac is the most luxurious of American cars. The one that I remember was gold, as big as a yacht, and the front seat stretched all the way across the front with two little armrests that folded down in the middle of the seat. Well, my grandma would perch me on the, the armrests and put a symbolic little seat belt across my lap <laughs> and drive me into the town square over the red brick roads into the shops where she could show me off to as many of her friends as possible. They kept the car in their little one-car garage that had the most intoxicating smell of Tide laundry detergent and gasoline. <laughs> I loved it. Next door lived my grandma's hairdresser and neighbor, Polly. For those of you that have seen Steel Magnolias, if you have not, you should, Polly's was just like in Steel Magnolias. Polly was a hairdresser and wore her hair in a giant bouffant like this that I greatly admired. Polly's, oh, Polly's was always full of lots of women that were there to get their hair set for the week and full of the slow chatter, warmth, and kind smiles of women that had raised their children together. They paid me lots of attention and my grandma would beam. From there, we would, my, my grandma would take me into church. Grandma was Presbyterian and so had to take me into church to show me off there to her friends. And so she, she also sang in the choir, and I never told her that she was always slightly off-key. <laughs> My grandma always told me growing up that when she was in high school in Stanford, she was Presbyterian, but a lot of her friends were Baptist, and they weren't allowed to go to the high school dances, just like in Footloose, if you ever saw that movie. The Baptists weren't allowed to go to the dances. So my mom told me the Baptists were the ones that would get in the car and drive out to the lake and park. And they were the ones that always ended up pregnant. <laughs> mom wasn't a fan of, Bab of Baptists. So from, <laughs> from, 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 the, from church, we, went, we would go and sit in the back porch at Grandma and Papu's gazebo. They had a little gazebo, and they would sit out there in the back. And one summer, West Texas summers were so hot and dry, and they were having yet another drought. And I was out playing in the back, and my, my Papu would always maintain some geraniums. They had these pink and red geraniums that would grow in these little planters around the gazebo, and they'd be sitting out there, and it smelled wonderful. And I'd be playing, and there was this drought, and my grandma says, she goes, Trish, you need to pray for rain. We need rain. And I was, I was a little embarrassed and, you know, a little shy. And she, but when she insisted, I went ahead and threw up my arm, arms and I said, let it rain. And that night, there was an unforeseen deluge, at least to me. And they were thrilled and I was stunned. From... <laughs> My, my grandmother would also stock all of the sugary cereals that my very health-conscious mother would never allow into our house. I had Fruit Loops, Captain Crunch, Apple Jacks, all the things that my mom would not allow into my house. It was proof that my grandmother loved me, and we, we always agreed that it would be our little secret. She also made the world's best scrambled eggs and waffles from scratch with bacon in the middle. They were amazing. When I was little, I also, she knew I had a penchant for black olives, and so she would put black olives in the dishes, and they would actually let me walk around, 
like Helen Keller and pick them out like that. My grandmother was always sharing her wisdom of how to be a woman like she wanted me to be. She, she put a particular stress on manners because good manners didn't cost the thing and she wanted to make sure that I would be comfortable having dinner at the White House if ever I was invited. She, was also, she also stressed the importance of perfume and the fact that you sh your presence should never be known. It should be sensed and a little bit goes a very long way. I always felt incredibly loved and cherished and unconditionally loved at my grandma's house. It was where I got to kind of cast the structured childhood aside from my home and be in the care of people who truly enjoyed spoiling me and cherishing me and loving me. At this particular challenge in my life, I cherish the memories of being unconditionally loved and cared for. Thank you.